Configuring the EGX350 for nose cone engraving. On the handy panel, we want to press the menu key until we see the home view Z1, Z0, Z2 menu. We want to move the cursor over to view and press enter. This will move the carriage to the view position. We'll then go ahead and open the top cover and we are going to install the supplied AS10 sheet to the lower left corner of the engraving table. We'll install our engraving stock to the lower left corner on top of the AS10 sheet and then we'll go ahead and remove the protective cover. We'll go ahead and close the cover and on the handy panel we want to press the menu key into the home view Z1, Z0, Z2 menu appears. Move the cursor to the home position and press the enter key. This will move the spindle to the lower left corner. Press the menu key until the XYZ RPM menu shows up. Then using the Z minus key we want to lower the spindle to the lower left corner and press the XY origin set button and press enter to set our home position. Next we'll press the menu key until we see the IO others adjustment menu. We'll move the cursor to others and press enter. Make sure that revolution is on and press enter. Press the menu key and make sure auto Z control is turned on. You'll get a message that says set lock lever to one or two. We'll go ahead and open the cover and push the button in and down to the one position. This will float the spindle assembly. We'll then press the menu key to get back to the XYZ RPN menu. Now using the arrow keys we want to move the nose cone over a flat area of our material and press the Z minus key until an asterisk appears next to Z auto. Next we're going to install the supplied engraving cutter using our supplied hex wrench. We'll install the cutter from the top to the brass cutter knob until it touches the material then we'll go ahead and lock it in place with the hex wrench. Once the tool's locked in, we'll press the Z plus key to bring the Z all the way up and then we're ready to adjust our nose cone. To adjust the nose cone for our depth, we want to loosen the thumb screw that locks it in place. Each tick mark is equal to one thousandths of an inch. For this application we will adjust the nose cone to seven thousandths of an inch and then we'll tighten the thumb screw so the nose cone doesn't move. And now we're ready to set up our application. Once the EGX350 has been configured for nose cone engraving, we will now configure Roland Engrave Studio for engraving. For this project, we're going to engrave an 8 inch by 6 inch 2 ply engraving stock. So we'll go ahead and launch Engrave Studio. And once we launch Engrave Studio, we want to click on Machines and ensure that the EGX350 is selected. We'll then go ahead and click on create a new file. First thing we want to do is set our units to inches. We'll set our width for 8 inches, our height 6 inches, and the material thickness is 0 0.064. For the XY origin position we want lower left corner selected and you want to ensure that the use origin offset is unchecked and then click OK. At this point we're going to go ahead and import our file. 
we're going to go ahead and import an Adobe Illustrator file. You can also import EPS and you can also work with JPEG, BMP, PDF, DXF, TIFF, and GIF files and automatically vector. We'll go ahead and select the graphic and we can center it into our material. To resize it under our edit vectors we can select the move scale rotate icon and if we hold the shift key down we can scale the file keeping it proportional as well as centered on our material. Once we have the file centered and ready to go, we'll now go in and add our toolpath to the graphic. We're going to go ahead and click on the toolpaths tab. And to thumbnail it, we can click on the little thumbnail here, which will keep the toolpath window open. Want to click on the material setup and set our rapid clearance gap as well as our Z position to an eighth inch, 0.125. Click OK. We will now click on the quick engraving toolpaths. Under the tool option, we want to click on select. And we're going to select the engraving tool. In this case, we're using an eighth inch cutter with a 0.010 tip. Now for the engraving parameters, for the cutting parameters, we want to set our pass per depth to 0.03 inches. This will keep the machine from doing multiple passes. For the step over, we want to make sure it's set for 0.005. Down below for our feeds and speeds, we can set our unit to millimeters per second. And for the feed rate, we can set this to between 30 and 40 millimeters for engraving stock and for the plunge rate we'll set it to the max of 30. Go ahead and click on apply click OK. Now for the depth and pressure we'll go ahead and input 0.010 ten thousandths of an inch. Even though the machine is set for auto Z control the software must have a value associated to the depth in order to be able to generate a toolpath for engraving. For the type of toolpath, we're going to select fill, and we're going to go with the hatch fill as opposed to an offset fill. I'm going to put an angle of 135 degrees. You can play with this option to get the setting that works best for you. We can give the toolpath a name. We'll call it Fill. This is useful if you're using multiple toolpaths. And click Calculate to process the toolpath. If we zoom in on the toolpath, you can see the actual toolpath on the screen. At this point, we're complete with our file preparation. And to output, we can click on Output Toolpaths to output the file to the engraver.
Please see Chapter 4 for configuration of the EGX350 for non-nose coding